Hey there creepy peeps and welcome to day 30 of 31 days of Horrorween. Today we are going to be talking about idle hands. Really quick though, before I get into anything else, I want to say thank you to my creepy patron peeps for your support of my channel. Thank you so, so much. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link in the description. So directed by Rodman Flender, Idle Hands follows stoner Anton who finds out his parents have been murdered by a killer who has been stalking his town. Anton, with the help of his stoner friends, find out that his hand has been possessed and has a murderous mind of its own. A fun fact about this movie, I just thought this was super fun. Um, so spoiler alert, um, although this movie is like almost 20 years old, so I don't feel that bad about it. Um, Anton's hand, his possessed hand, at one point um, is severed from his body and then it, you know, runs around the rest of the movie all by itself. Um, at that point, <laughs> the hand is being played by Christopher Hart, who also played The Thing in the Addams Family movies. There's also some other fun like filming location facts like uh, the neighborhood that Anton lives in is the same neighborhood from Halloween and the gym at the Halloween dance in the movie is held in the same gym that Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie was filmed in during their dance scene. There we go. I got it. Full sentence. The movie was super fun. Um, it aired a little bit more on the comedy side of horror comedy, but I think it fits the tone of the movie with the whole like stoner thing and then how gory the movie was. In place of like scares or terror, um, the film goes for gore and I was okay with that. I feel like the movie sets the tone early on that it's going to be kind of just like a fun, goofy sort of movie. So that's good. Like it just set me up for the rest of the movie. I also thought the practical effects in the movie were fun. The makeup effects, um, especially Mick and Penub. Um, <laughs> they are undeadified for most of the movie. Um, so they looked really good and the CGI was not horrible. Not great, but not horrible either. I was also really digging the humor in this movie. It was like, I don't really know how to classify it, but it was kind of like weird and quirky and I don't know, I, maybe I was just in the right mood for it. I don't know how to classify it, but I, it worked. I don't know. I do know I laughed way too hard at the whole druid time bit though. I thought the characters were casted really well, especially the female characters. I really did like them. I wish, like I'll get into it in a second. I wish they had a bit more <laughs> time to be as badass as they were, but I liked how throughout the movie Vivica A. Fox's character and Jessica Alba's character are really the ones with sense in their heads and they can take care of themselves for the most part. Um, and they're resourceful and smart as opposed to the male characters of this movie who are either stoners or they're just not very uh, helpful at anything. <laughs> so kind of getting into that, I feel like Vivica A. Fox's character and Jessica Alba's character um, weren't in enough of the movie, especially Vivica A. Fox, her character. Like, I feel like she had almost nothing to do and she kind of just cropped up every now and then, like, which is a shame because I thought her character was funny, especially like all the disguises she puts on to blend in while she's looking for the person with the possessed hand. I feel like I wish there was a lot more of her in the movie instead of just like cropping up at random times in the film. Um, same with Jessica Alba, like from what I understand, there was a scene or two that was cut from the, uh, the movie that, that seemed like it would have helped to develop her character more. Um, which is disappointing, but it happens. Um, it does make me wonder if the same thing happened with Vivica A. Fox's character, and also if there's a director's cut of the movie. Because if so, I need to get my hand on that ASAP. Get it? Hand. Get my hand on it. Because, you know, demon hand. No? Okay. <laughs> So was Idle Hands worth it? Um, I would say yes, especially if you're a fan of 90s movies, if you're a fan of punk rock, um, if you remember having the biggest crush on Devin Sawa from the Casper movie, um, you need to watch this one. <laughs> I had a fun time watching it. 
it's a goofy-ish kind of movie that doesn't take itself too seriously. So I recommend if you go to watch this movie, keep that in mind and go in with that kind of expectation and you will most likely have a fun time watching it. I'm gonna give the movie a four out of five. I thought it was fun and it was effective for what it was. Um, on IMDb, it has a 6.2 out of 10. On Rotten Tomatoes, though, it has a 16% critic score and a 58% audience score. And on Letterboxd, it has a 2.9 out of 5. But if you want to check out Idle Hands, it's available on Amazon to rent. So I'll leave an affiliate link in the description if you want to check it out that way. There's no pressure to use the link, but if you do, it does help out the channel a little bit. If you've already seen Idle Hands, you can let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday through Friday and you can ring that notification bell down there to be notified every time I post a video or go live, even though it doesn't always work. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay strange. Bye.